thyroid is the short case for us. We don't use as long case and don't uh, elaborately discuss. So uh, with this, we'll go. And uh, uh, I wish uh, Deepak uh, uh, all the best. And start presenting the case. Good evening, sir. I'll be presenting the case of Ms. Tenmoy, 47-year-old female, hailing from... Share your, uh, share your PPT, please. Shall I start, sir? Yeah, please. Good evening, everyone. Today, I'll be presenting a case of uh, Ms. Tenmari, 47-year-old female, hailing from Tirpatur, working as a daily wage worker, belonging to a low socioeconomic status, presenting with the chief complaints of swelling in front of the neck for three months duration. History of the presenting illness. The patient was apparently asymptomatic until three months back after which she noticed a swelling in front of the neck. It was insidious in onset and rapidly progressive in nature. Initially small in size and later progressed in the current size as that of a lemon. It was not associated with any pain, no history of any change in voice, no history of any difficulty in breathing, no history of any difficulty in swallowing, no history of aspiration, and no history of... Why history of aspiration? In case of uh, ex uh, extensively infiltrating tumors like anap anaplastic carcinoma, there can be uh, infiltration of the recurrent lens and nerve. Uh, what are all the symptoms of the recurrent lens nerve palsy? Sir? What are all the symptoms of recurrent lens nerve palsy? Hoarseness of voice, sir. Okay. Hoarseness of voice will be the main symptom. Chronic cough. Due to aspiration. Okay. See, uh -huh. actually, recurrent well geno involvement can be unilateral or bilateral. Yes. Okay. If it's a unilateral involvement, commonest symptom is uh, asymptomatic. Will not produce any symptoms. Mm -hmm. If it is in the paramedian position and the opposite cord compensates well, there will not be much of a problem except a mild amount of dysphonia. Okay. So mm -hmm. usually if it is uh, open. Then the patient will have um, dysphonia or change of voice. Along with that, the patient can have an aspiration, particularly whenever there is a bilateral adductor palsy. Okay. So whenever you talk of change of voice in um, uh, thyroid, uh, the thyroid nodules, along with that, you should talk about aspiration also. Yes. How much important the um, Change of voice, the same amount of importance should go to uh, difficulty in breathing and aspiration. Okay. Oh, yes. Right. There was no history of any heat or cold. Sir? Why the patient developed difficulty in swallowing? Uh, a very large tumor causing a compression of the trachea. Which in uh, and compression of the esophagus, the patient may develop a difficulty in uh, swallowing. When the tumor goes posteriorly, like if it becomes a bigger zuccarcanter nodule or uh, it goes between the uh, visceral vertebral canal, it compresses the esophagus, produces dysphagia. Okay, you might not have a big tumor anteriorly, but the tumor can go posteriorly can produce a bigger nodule, can cause compression of the nasal packets, can produce difficulty in swallowing. Okay. Yes. Then. There was no history of any difficulty in breathing, sir. Okay. okay. Why there is difficulty in breathing? It can either occur due to a large tumor with a retrosternal excision causing compression or a infiltrating tumor uh, infiltrating into trachea that may lead to a uh, difficulty in breathing. Sir. It is too early for me to ask about the uh, gradings of tracheal infiltration in your 
presentation. Okay. Yes. So we'll go to that when you are uh, discussing later. But the commonest causes: bilateral abductor palsy, compression of the the trachea, tracheomalacia, retrosternal extension, and uh, the direct infiltration of the trachea because the infiltration inside the lumen in trachea is relatively rare. Okay, there may be a circumferential involvement, there may be an external infiltration. We go between the two rings, can just go inside the, the lumen without causing a, a breach of the inner perichondrium. Okay, wow. but going inside the lumen and becomes uh, uh, this thing will be usually seen in anaplastic carcinoma and it's very difficult to treat those cases. Okay, wow. then. There was any no history of any heat or cold intolerance, the no history of palpitation or tremors, the no history of any significant weight loss or weight gain, the no history of any chronic cough, the no history of any hemoptysis, no history of fever, no history of any evening rise of temperature. Sorry, Deepak, uh, what is the name of the patient? Ten months. Age? 46, sir. 46. Okay. Oh, fine. Proceed. What is it age and sex tells you? Uh, the patient is more pre-related, like a, in case of a thyroidic malignancy, like a papillary carcinoma thyroid, the increased incidence is seen in a, uh, from second decade to fifth decade, sir. See, actually, the uh, below second, uh, below 20 years and above 60 years, that malignant child transformation is reasonably common. In between time, particularly in females, the risk of malignancy is less. Okay. Yeah, proceed. The patient is not a known case of diabetes, hypertension, asthma, tuberculosis, or seizure disorder. There is no history of any previous surgeries. The no history of previous irradiation to the head or neck. What are all the uh, when the irradiation history is very important? In case of uh, it is a main etiology in case of papillary carcinoma of thyroid cell. What irradiation you mean? Uh, irradiation means uh, in case of exposure to CT cell. Exposure to even and repeated exposure to the uh, prolonged exposure to the uh, uh, radiological investigation can have a predisposing to form a uh, uh, malignant changes. Next. The patient consumes a mixed diet. The patient has regular bowel and bladder habits, sleep and appetite normal. The patient has no addictions. The symptoms of thyroid can be because of the nodule causing symptoms. Then the uh, thyroid uh, malignancy and then thyroid function. Thyroid can have an hypo function or an hyper function. Okay. <laughs> Particularly for a uh, female patient, men menstrual history is very important. Yes, sir. What is the menstrual history of the patient? Yes, the patient at the age of 11. Where should be your uh, menstrual history? Sir. I should be added in prior sense. Menstrual history should be before family history or? Before family history. Sorry. Yes. Okay. Then. Yes. Menarche at, attained at the age of 11. Regular cycles. No history of any dysmenorrhea or oligomenorrhea, sir. I think you have forgotten your uh, uh, OG presentation. I yeah, sir. I missed actually the last menstrual period. Uh, mentioning the last menstrual period. This uh, the menstruation cycle is five days a week for a 28 week cycle with a normal flow without any clots or any pain. I think this is how you, you, you talk about the menstrual history of the uh, female patient, right? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, so, how many days? In how many uh, days cycle? How many days it's there? And uh, how is the flow? 
whether there's any clots associated or pain associated. Yes. Okay? Yes. Sir. Right. Then. Family history of the patient. The no history of similar complaints in the family. Then no history of any malignancies in the family. Sir. Why is this important? Sir, it is uh, specifically associated with the medullary carcinoma of thyroid, sir. If the patient in medullary carcinoma, 90% is... What is it already you are? What is it already you are presenting only a malignancy? Is it? No, sir. Many uh, syndrome, uh, cancers can associate with the syndrome, sir. Like uh, multiple endocrine neoplasia, Cowden okay. syndrome, uh, okay. familiar adenomatous polyposis. Uh, okay. And uh, familial uh, medullary thyroid cancer also, sir. Okay. So what is chondritis complex? Sir. Okay, carry on. General examination of the patient. The patient is conscious, oriented to time, place, and person, moderately built and nourished. No pallor. This patient suddenly losing weight. What do you think of? Uh, suddenly, I probably suspect a malignancy is there. Sudden uh, patient losing weight first choice is malignancy, is it? Uh, no, sir. Uh, hyperthyroidism. Hyperthyroidism. <laughs> okay. So, uh, built is very important. And uh, I mean, sorry, nourishment is very important. Yes. Okay. Right. Then there is no pallor, no ictus, no cyanosis, no clubbing, no generalized lymphadenopathy, and no pedal edema. The pulse rate was 90 per minute, regular rhythm, normal volume and character. The blood pressure was 120 bar 88, measured in the right arm in sitting position. The saturation of the patient was 99%. There is no orthostatic hypotension. When you talk about BP, blood pressure is 120 by 80 in the right upper arm, in the uh, sitting position and there is no orthostatic hypotension. Okay, sir. Saturation was 99% in room health. No pella, no ichor, no cyanosis, no clubbing, no generalizing lymphadenopathy. These are all very important general examination signs. What is more important in the uh, uh, thyroid patient? The thyroid patient, uh, the patient... Uh, general examination. General examination. General examination, sir. Mm -hmm. Ictrus can be present in case of any metastasis uh, to the liver. Function, thyroid function. Thyroid function, sir. Uh, Excessive uh, sweating. Uh, uh, the, uh, the patient, in case of hyperthyroidism, the patient will be having tachycardia, palpitations, and tremors, sir. And the uh, pulse will Tremor. be high volume. When you look for PLR, ectus, cyanosis, clubbing, you look at the fingers. At the same time, you should look for tremors. Yes. Sir. Okay. Right, then we have to look for the look fine the, tremors at the fingers. And what, do you, what do you look in the uh, legs? I will look for a pretubial myxedema, sir. It is a pretubial myxedema is because of what? It is a feature of hypothyroidism. A Graves disease, sir. Hypothyroidism is different hyperthyroidism. What is the lats? Sir? What is the lats? Okay, continue. Systemic examination, respiratory system, normal vesicular burst sounds, cardiovascular system, S1, S2 heard, no murmur. General examination first. Uh, examination of the system next. Uh, systemic examination is the last. Okay. When you see, for example, when you examine the uh, Oh, neurological symptoms. You see brain meds. You will be talking about meds before the primary lesion. When you when you, you when you palpate the abdomen, when you palpate liver, you will be palpating liver before your thyroid examination. So always your systemic examination comes last. Yes. Sir. Okay. okay. All right then. The local examination, sir. Examination of neck. On inspection, an oval swelling of size 4 into 5 cm approximately is seen over the anterior anterolateral aspect of the neck 
with a well defined margin and smooth surface superiorly it extends 6 cm below the level of the mandible inferiorly 2 cm above the sternal notch laterally from the anterior border of the right sternocleidomastoid and medially up to the midline the swelling moves with the deglutition but doesn't move with the, on protrusion of tongue the lower border of the swelling is visible skin skin or the swelling is normal no dilated veins or discharging sinuses pemberton sign is negative no other visible swellings on the neck no dilated veins seen on the neck going to palpation palpation was done by lahis method the inspectory findings were confirmed the no warmth or tenderness of the swelling swelling of size 4.0 cm palpated on the anterolateral aspect of the neck hard in consistency smooth surface regular margins and mobile lower border is palpable skin of the swelling is pinchable no pulsations or thrill over the swelling rest of the thyroid gland is not palpated separately is it a ovoid swelling or a butterfly like swelling so ovoid swelling sir that means what it like a morcalive uh, there is no diffuse enlargement of the thyroid there is a mass or a single nodule arising from one of the lobes of the thyroid sir the the swell is the disease of the thyroid lobe not the diffuse thyroid swelling right then the berry sign was negative poachers test was sign? negative what is berry sign berry sign is uh, due to encapsulation of the tumor of the carotid on palpation there will be absent carotid pulse in the neck sir that is known as berry sign positive okay poachers test was negative sir palpable poachers test poachers test is actually uh, uh, on applying the uh, the patient is asked to gently extend the neck and the gentle lateral pressure is given on both lobes of the thyroid if the patient develops strider it is an indication that there is a scaba trachea that uh, there is intraluminal narrowing of the trachea sir. if it is if the patient develops strider it is known as coaches the posti okay what is the plane of the of the swelling plane of the swelling is uh, uh, deep to uh, deep cervical features sir superficial level of deep deep cervical when you see a swelling to palpate the the swelling you palpate the size of the swelling shape of a swelling surface of the swelling then borders of the of the swelling then plane of the of the swelling right so what is your uh, extent of swelling the extent of the swelling is actually uh, superiorly uh, no, laterally laterally, laterally, laterally. Extends from the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid up to the midline sir so this is related to the anterior border of sternocleidomastoid yes sir. so you got to tell where the, the swelling is superficial to the sternocleidomastoid or deep to the the sternocleidomastoid swelling is so you should look the... for mm. uh, the patient uh, we should actually uh, uh, flex the neck against the resistance sir so that the muscle is contracted and if the swelling becomes more prominent the swelling uh, the swelling is superficial to the muscle or on the muscle if it uh, decreases in size the swelling is uh, deep to the muscle sir then what else you you look for on doing this test what else you you look for i i look for mobility sir whether the yes. the swelling is uh, infiltrating the muscle or not when you contract the muscle swelling mobility decreases that means it's the, it's in between the layers of muscle and it's infiltrating it may be infiltrating the muscle okay oh. then the other muscle uh, you should look for is the strap muscles yes so contract the the strap muscles you can see the swelling will become less prominent or or more prominent okay then then uh, there was palpable multiple right level 3 lymph nodes sir 1 into 1 cm size non tender firm in consistency smooth surface and mobile what the node is this 
level three node is such a middle jugular node, sir. How do you classify level of nodes? Uh, the jugular sir, chain nodes. How will you how will you classify? It? The jugular chain of nodes are uh, into, uh, upper jugular, middle jugular, and lower jugular, sir. Okay. Upper upper jugular extends from uh, that is level two node extends up to the uh, uh, lo uh, level of the lower border of hyoid, sir. Lower of hyoid, which is divided into. It is radiological. Clinically, how will you how will you look for? Or when you operate, when you see, how will you say? We will look for the maybe uh, as a. Uh, Actually, it will be anterior to the anterior border of steno-pedomastoid and the posterior to uh, steno-hyoid, sir. See, it's upper, middle, and lower. What is upper? The nodes which are in and around the posterior belly of diagastric are upper nodes. In and around or above the posterior belly of diagastric are upper, board, upper lobes. In and around the homoid and below the level of the homoid are, are lower lobes. Uh, lower nodes. If you can't classify whether it's the juglo diagastic or juglo homoid, then these nodes are all called the level three nodes. Level three nodes are characteristic nodes of the uh, midline structures like uh, thyroid and then uh, larynx and hypopharynx. Okay. So when you see these nodes, do you think this is uh, clinically malignant nodes? Actually, it is a significant. Your description is you are non-committal about the neural status. Did you did you measure the nodes? Yes, sir. It was one in one centimeter size. Not How did you measure? Do you have a scale? Yes, sir. You have multiple nodes. Each node is one one million, one centimeter in size. Means one centimeter is the cutoff point. A node which is more than one centimeter usually you should you should suspect uh, malignant deposits. Okay. If you say one point five, I have taken that you want to commit this as a malignant deposits. Okay. If you say about 0.5 milligram or uh, 0.5 uh, centimeter nodes, I have said that you don't want to commit this as a malignant deposits. One centimeter is just borderline. So when you operate on a node and uh, you find it's uh, uh, non-malignant nodes, then you will be wasting time, right? Or right. when you operate and uh, leave the nodes, it's trouble. Yes, sir. Shall I continue, sir? Yeah, yeah, continue, continue. The trachea was midline, airway was adequate. On percussion, a resonant knot was present over the manubrium standing. On auscultation, there was no brewing present over the ceiling. Sir. Okay. Uh, in, an, uh, in case of a uh, like hyperthyroid state, like Graves' disease, due to ingress to vascularity. On where, else you will, where else you will auscultate? On the superior pole, sir. And Where I'll, else you will auscultate? I will auscultate over the carotid, sir. In order which to carotid? right side not you. Which carotid you will, you will auscultate? Auscultate for what? Auscultate for a brewy, sir. Which side you it's common to have a brewy? Uh left side, sir, to compensate the uh, sorry, right side, sir, due to numinal narrowing. There will be a brew in the right side. Okay. So you will ask it only on the right side, is it? Should ask it on both carotids because uh, luminal obstruction can produce brewy at the same time, whereas an hypercirculation can produce brewy. When the one side carotid is blocked opposite side, you will have an hyperdynamic circulation. That hyperdynamic circulation will produce brewy. So you should ask it for both carotids. Okay. But where else you will ask it? I will. Uh... Won't you ask it on trachea? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. The earliest tracheal infiltration will be here. 
with a stethoscope you see a mild thrill because of uh, uh, tracheal obstruction and strider you can when you put a stethoscope you can feel the uh, you can hear the turbulent flow okay yes. Yes. right then that's an earliest sign of strider okay oral cavity lips gum teeth buccal mucosa gingiva buccal sacs Uh, retromolar trigon floor of mouth and heart valve were normal oral pharynx bilateral tonsillar pillars and fossa were normal uvula midline posterior pharyngeal wall normal an indirect laryngoscopy base of the trunk were normal epiglottis normal bilateral vilicula free bilateral arytenoid why, why do you do a ideal scopy in this patient sir in order to know the uh, vocal cord status of the patient sir okay then anything else uh to uh, rule out any uh, tracheal or uh, laryngeal infiltration by the tumors laryngeal infiltration laryngeal infiltration will be seen with the ct scan okay sir uh, in order to rule out uh, any mass that actually was primary a laryngeal tumor which causes a uh, uh, extra laryngeal mm -hmm. spread and the present absolutely no no laryngeal symptoms and the thyroid swelling you think it is because of a laryngeal tumor come on man no sir not, not so what you should look for is you should look for uh, uh when the vocal cord is status whether it's opening up completely or closing when the opening up completely you look for an anterior wall of the trachea for the tracheal infiltration and the intraluminal spread particularly below that subglottic area Yes. Okay. Third one is look for posterior one third of the tongue. Yes. Posterior one third of the tongue can also have a uh, thyroid deposits. Whether yes. that is becoming bigger or not, you should you should see. Then um, uh, look for pooling of saliva. Pooling of saliva. So when the patient has got a dysphagia, where the tumor is uh, going to the uh, uh, Is of agus. Then you will have a pooling of saliva mm. in the both piriform fossa. Both what is that called? Uh, pooling of saliva in both piriform fossa is called what, fossa. man? What sign? Jacobson. Jacobson sign. That's called Boca sign, right? Boca sign. Yes, sir. Okay, then. man if you if you present thyroid you will forget ent is it no sir no sir yes then on examination what is that glottic chink glottic chink is actually no remark glottic chink glottic chink you talk only when there is a mass in the vocal cords otherwise it's only a rima okay oh. then next nose the external nasal framework was normal okay, bilateral i there was no proptosis chemosis or congestion the eye signs were absent the visual acuity was 6 by 6 in both eyes the extra ocular movements were free and in full range in all directions okay a diagnosis sir a case of solitary nodular thyroid probably papillary carcinoma Uh, T3N1B M0 sir. Solid nodule thyroid. Functional status. So U thyroid. U thyroid solitary nodule. Why do you say it's 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 a carcinoma? Because the pay it is a uh, the patient gives a history of rapid progression of size and there is associated cervical lymphadenopathy sir. So uh, giving it just a suspicion of uh... want to commit malignancy. Want to commit malignancy? It's a clinical examination. You could have told the size of one node bigger. You can always tell that more than the the nodes are fixed, infiltrating. No, sir, it was not fixed. Clinically malignant node, hard in consistency. Yes, sir. It was actually one centimeter node. You can't say whether it's odd or not. Come on, okay. unless you are mentally just fixed. 
you could have you could have have the clues of uh, uh, investigations but clinically you can't say it's a carcinoma papillary carcinoma it's clinically it's a solitary nodule thyroid so a solitary nodule thyroid what are all maybe the um, uh, consistency a solitary nodule can be firm in consistency sir as in case of what a follicular adenoma disease produces what are all the types of lesion produces solitary nodule follicular adenoma sir okay toxic adenoma follicular okay. carcinoma uh, okay. a uh, papillary carcinoma can also present as a solitary nodular thyroid so oh. it can be cyst it can be solid tumor or it can be mixed tumor okay, okay. Oh. can be a cyst very rarely it can be a malignant cyst if it's a mixed tumor partly solid partly uh, um fluid still you got to suspect malignancy if it is usually completely solid tumor it can it still can be a benign tumor okay so it i will present this as a solitary nodule thyroid u thyroid u thyroid uh with the uh, uh neck nodes non specific neck nodes for evaluation for neck nodes for evaluation straight away you can't tell it's a papillary carcinoma which is a tissue diagnosis and uh, without uh, without getting that uh, the malignancy you can't classify this node oh. why do you say the the, the node is t3 uh, the uh, sir actually uh... oh, sorry sorry okay okay uh, how will you how will you proceed actually i would now like to investigate the patient sir i will yes. do a routine blood investigations and on your cbc rle with the serum calcium uh, and ptnr and along with i will do a thyroid profile containing of the tsh free t3 free t4 i will uh, do a look for tumor markers like uh, carcinoma embryonic antigen uh, calcitonin uh, i would like to do a excellent common diseases more common diseases is differentiated thyroid carcinoma man okay most i would uh, what is the tumor marker sir what is the tumor marker for differentiated thyroid carcinoma some shit thyroglobulin yes sir yes sir thyroglobulin then i will do a x-ray neck soft tissue uh, to uh, ap lateral view to rule out any tracheal deviation or a tracheal infiltration uh, i will do a uh, uh, x-ray chest as a pilot film and to rule out any uh, uh, lung metastasis uh-huh. Yeah, present. I will do a USG neck for the patient, sir, as a primary imaging modality uh, to look for the size of the tumor, the morphology and pathology. I will look for any features of malignancy, malignancy whether present in the USG or not, which are uh, features of malignancy in malignancy in USG. Uh, solid hypochoic uh, lesion. Uh, the lesion taller than wide uh, increased internal blood flow loss of peripheral halo and uh, ill defined uh, nodular margins i will okay. i will do a usc also to uh, uh, rule out significant uh, ling- uh, cervical lymph nodopathy and look for uh, features of metastasis in the lymph node which are loss of fatty hilum presence of cystic changes and the presence of microcalcifications uh, i will do a uh, cct next uh, in order to look for the retrosternal extension tracheal invasion 
in the ah. patient ka sir for this patient retrosternal extension mm, no sir for this patient there is no retrosternal extension oh, retrosternally what will look for uh, whether what the this patient can have lymph nodes yes sir retrosternal lymph nodes upper mediastinal lymph nodes can be there sir actually pre tracheal pre uh, level 6 and 7 can still have yeah. then uh, more than uh, retrosternal lymph node uh, retrosternal extension uh, lymph nodes are uh, common then then i will do would like to do a fnac for this patient sir and uh, classify uh, and as per the fnac i will be like to uh, further proceed with my management the fnac the current system what we are following is the bethesda system it consists of uh, six levels the first level uh, there is a unsatisfactory specimen second is a benign lesion the third one is uh, a, a, a typical uh, atypia or with the uh, undetermined significance or follicular lesion with the un, uh, undetermined uh, significance for which i have to do a repeat fnac uh in the fourth level i will uh, there will be a polygonal neoplasm for which uh, i would like to do a hemithyroidectomy uh, and uh, do a frozen section and if it comes as a neoplasm one by one one by one we go tell me level level 4 and what is level 5 then level 5 I mean, sus suspicion of malignancy sir and level 6 there is a level 3 4 5 all are suspicious malignancy in a level 5 uh, there will be 60 to 75 chances that the patient is uh, having a malignancy and level 6 the 98 what is the, what is the chance of malignancy in level 3 level 3 uh, uh, 10 to 15% 15% okay up to 30% is uh, better the 4 and better the 5 is up to 60 65% okay Yes. So, better uh, the six is better the six is confirmatory of malignancy, sir. The ninety-seven to ninety-nine percent, the chance of malignancy is there, sir. Better the six. Okay. So when you do an ultrasound, you see only the cyst in the nodule. What will you do? Cyst in the nodule. I will do a USC guided as. What will you do? USC guided aspiration of the cyst, sir. Okay. Why you is you is guided? Yes, sir. In order to get a an uh, accurate. Whole thing is the cyst, man. To prick it, only fluid will come. Why you is guided? Okay. Go and spray it completely. Okay, with the use together, check that whether you can you aspect as much as possible. Completely, this this is collapses. Then what will you do? All this collapses completely. What will you do? I would uh, do a uh, radio uh, scintigraphy scan, sir. Like why? You aspirated everything completely. What do you do with the fluid? Fluid, I will. Uh, I will, cytology sir. Do a centrifuge and do the send for cytology. Look for malignancy or not. If it's not malignant, what do you do then? See, you add a nodule, you aspirate it, it collapses completely, and that uh, cytology report is non-malignant. I will. What do you do? I will do a scintigraphy scan, sir. Then I look after whether the uh, nodule is a cold nodule, warm nodule, or a hot nodule, sir. With the Baba, there is no nodule now. It's only a cystic swelling. You have aspirated it completely. I will. What do you do? I will proceed. Wait and watch. Okay. Follow up the patient. See whether it gets connected or not. Okay, if it gets collected, do a uh, remove the cyst or do a hemithyroidectomy. Okay. okay, if it is not getting collected, 
leave him off follow you keep him in the follow up but if it comes as a malignancy manage it in like a malignant tumor okay so if the fns if fns comes as benign and you have a dominant nodule in the uh, right thyroid and uh, uh, non dominant still nodules on the opposite lobe also what will you do i will do a radio optic scan sir why okay radio optic scan what scan you will do i will do a iodine uh, 123 scan or a technician 99 scan sir iodine only okay what will you do and i will look further that there is actually increased uptake normal uptake or a decreased uptake sir there is a, if there is a decreased uptake that is a, whether it's a cold nodule there is increased chance of malignancy if there is increased uptake is a uh, how, will hyper- it's, how will you confirm its malignancy or not cold nodule you suspect malignancy what do you do next uh, i will do an fn that you already done man uh, i will do a, i will do a uh, hemithyroidectomy i said both lobes has got nodules what is the disease is called multinodular goiter multi nodular goiter with a dominant single nodule what will you do what surgery you do uh lobectomy sir once you remove this other nodule will become bigger okay it's a sir. it's a global disease what will you do a uh, total thyroidectomy i will do sir if you want to operate why you want to operate okay if you think you are going to operate cosmetically you decide whether you want surgery or not if you want surgery remove the remove the thyroid gland check for uh, uh, status uh, benign or, or malignant then go for a replacement dose of thyroid okay if it is a uh, 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 if the fnc comes as papillary carcinoma what do you do then if it comes as a papillary carcinoma uh, since the tumor is uh, more than 4 cm in size i will do a total thyroidectomy with a central command ne- neck dissection and an mr and d followed by uh, thyroid suppression uh, and wait, wait, wait. go go step by step okay so your plan is to do a total thyroidectomy central compartment with right side mr and d check left side see whether there is any steady nodes or not and then decide yes okay then uh, uh, okay if it is a uh, medullary carcinoma what will you do if it is a medullary carcinoma thyroid i will do a total thyroidectomy Uh, with the central compartment neck dissection sir one level above okay, okay for a medullary carcinoma it's like your uh, a skull base surgery if you see a see a tumor you remove one step above if you see a tumor on the uh, uh, um, ethmoids you got to remove the lamina papyracea if you see a tumor on the uh, skull base you got to remove that skull base and put the uh, uh the reconstruction similarly this for this whatever you want to do you got to do one step above to do a total thyroidectomy you got to do a central compartment or for this case you got to do a central compartment and the mr and d right okay right. then what will you do how will you uh, okay so how will you manage uh, apsia thyroid what's your plan it depends upon uh, uh, the operate what do you do next Sir? you operated what do you do next i will give a thyroid suppression dose sir straight away you start start the patient on eltroxin yes 
when you do a papillary carcinoma thyroid, when you operate the case, once you have operated the case, you got to wait for, you should not give heltroxin. You got to wait for the thyroid TSH to become more than 30. So three weeks, you don't give heltroxin. Oh. Three to four weeks. If you don't give heltroxin, if you go above 30, then you subject the patient for, this is the time you got to do an iodine 131 scan. Iodine 131 scan to look for any residual thyroid tissue or whether there is any other thyroid tissue which is left behind. That is the reason you got to do a complete thyroidectomy, remove all the all the small, small thyroid tissues like a, a pyramidal lobe or uh, you got to go for a, you can't leave behind these pedicles any tissue. You got to strip all the uh, all the thyroid tissues from the bed. It's from the uh, berries ligament, that uh, lower pole, upper pole. You can't you, you can't ligate close to the the upper pole and things like that. You remove all the thyroid tissue and remove all the lymph nodes. Then you got to look for whether there is any uptake or not. Once there is an uptake, you got to send the patient for thyroid ablation. Ablation. Thyroid ablation. Okay. What are all the uh, once you have uh, you have done a Thyroid ablation, you got to follow up the patient. How did you follow up the patient? There is a dynamic risk, uh, risk stratification for the follow up the patient, sir. The, it, uh, it can be classified into excellent response, intermediate response, and uh, incomplete response. In case of an, we have we'll be following up the patient with the uh, by using a suppressed uh, in in case of a. Uh, in case of a uh, excellent response, we will uh, the thyroglobulin, so the suppressed thyroglobulin level or the stimulus to thyroglobulin level would be um, less than which one, one you will do? By, by, suppressed, by or, suppressed or stimulated thyroglobulin, which one you will do? You got to do both. Okay, then. Then uh, if it, if it's more, uh, then I'll be doing a USG scan, and I will be doing a radionucleated uh, uptake scan also there. Based on this, oh, how much it will cost? Okay, okay. By basing this, we'll be doing a risk stratification. The thyroid uptake scan only when you have a presence of TSH or you on an ultrasound you suspect recurrence or suspect thyroid tissue. Otherwise, you will not do. Okay. If there is an okay. uh, after one year, it is not necessary to so continuously. You should follow up these cases for, with the uh, uh, monitoring is the uh, thyroglobulin and doing an USG. Okay, if there is any dearrangement, you got to to send the patient for thyroid uptake. Okay. Usually, Pap CA goes through the neck nodes, so you got to uh, take care of neck nodes. Okay. Then, then we have to all in follow up. We have to also monitor the TSH suppression levels. If the patient has a, having an excellent response, that is a, a low risk. The, we can keep the TSH levels at a 0.3 to 5 milli units per liter. If it, the patient is having an uh, uh, intermediate response, the, the, the patient uh, the TSH levels should be between 0.3. Three to point five that should be maintained for five to ten years. If the patient is an incomplete response, that if there is a residual disease or recurrent disease present, we should uh, keep the TSH less than 0.1 milli units uh, uh, per liter for life long. Okay. So, um, what is the suppression TSH? Uh, what is the, the suppression dose of uh, eldroxin? Atroxin is given as a suppression dose of 2 microgram per kilogram. Two micrograms. That's very low. Or 300 microgram per day for OD, sir. 300 microgram per day. That's very high. You, you, your, your calculation should be around 200 to 220. 20 mics, okay, oh. with an empty stomach. So that will keep the uh, the eltraxin. Above that, you will get the complication of uh, uh, thyroxin therapy. 
it will be about uh, 3 to 3.4 uh, per kilogram from body weight okay it will be approximately around 200 uh, around 200 bikes okay then uh, uh, that is a separation dose if it is not required excellent this thing is a separation dose is not not required then you can you can give the uh, uh, replacement. replacement dose okay then uh, uh, how long you will will follow up the patient if it is a, if he is a excellent respond patient we will um, monitor the patient for 6 months for the first one year followed by annually for the rest of the year if it is a uh, patient is a intermediate or incomplete respo response is present we have to more frequent uh, visits should be made by the patients what is more frequent visits Every three months for for first year, then every every six months for next to five years. After that, annually. Okay. Then, uh, 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 if it is a medullary carcinoma, what do you do? In case of medicine, medullary carcinoma, after doing a, a total thyroidectomy and neck dissection, I will follow up the patient with the markers such as calcitonin, calcium embryonic antigen. Uh, uh, and a serum calcium. Uh, uh, cal uh, calcitonin is an excellent uh, marker for a uh, that will give an idea about the presence of a residual disease or not, sir. And we will, I would like to do a red proto mutation analysis for that patient. Uh, uh, I will rule out any familial, uh, uh, any other familial uh, like me, 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 uh, multiple endocrine endocrine neoplasia associated with it. I would like to give a, a biological cell uh, since it is a TSH receptor. Uh, uh, red protoangiogen is actually codes for a TSH a tyrosine kinase receptor in the plasma membrane. Uh, biological such as, such as uh, vandetinib and capsetinib uh, can be used uh, in case of uh, 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 extensive extranodal invasion, uh, extensive extrathyroidal invasion of the tumor is present. I would uh, think about uh, giving a external media, uh, external beam radiotherapy for the patients. External beam radiotherapy. If there is extensive extra nodal, uh, extra thyroidal invasion, and I am uh, expecting a local, uh, local, uh, local regional recurrence of the tumor. Would you give a thyroid ablation? No, sir. I will not give a thyroid ablation. It will have. In medullary carcinoma, it is arising from parafollicular C cells. Sir. There will be decreased uptake. There will not be an uptake, will not work. Okay. So if you have, if it goes out of your hand, if you have a large recurrence, if you feel it's uh, feel it's an inoperable growth, you should go for radiotherapy. Then you will try doing a uh, uh, thyroid uh, uh, this one. Uh, uh, thyroid ablation. Okay, so when the patient has got a uh, recurrence, papillary CA recurrence, what do you do? Opposite the same note that is a recurrence, what do you do? Uh, Brain recurrence, skull recurrence, liver, meds, lung yeah. meds, what do you do? Um, what is the mainstay of management? So, radioid in ablation, sir. If it's operable, you operate and take it out. For example, skull beds, you do a, a craniopalsy. I mean, cranioplasty. 
or if they are, if it's possible, you operate the patient. If it's not possible, you you send for ablation. If it is too big for ablation, then you can give a, uh, a partial excision with an ablation, or you can you can give a radiotherapy. Okay, so uh, if it is a uh, anaplastic carcinoma, what do you do? If if the if the anaplastic carcinoma is uh, I, uh, resectable, I will do a uh, I will do a uh, total thyroidectomy with limb node uh, excision, uh, followed by uh, radiotherapy and chemotherapy, sir. Chemotherapy with uh, cisplatin, doxorubicin, docetaxel. If it is a uh, non-resectable tumor, I will like to suppress the tumor with the, uh, radiotherapy and chemotherapy. Okay, so usually these are all non-operable tumors, very fast-growing tumors. If you leave behind the tumor and, and come out within one or two months, the old tumor will come back. So it's not advisable to remove the tumor unless the tumor is very small and, and well resectable. And then post-operative oh, radiotherapy will always help these patients. If it is not working out, then uh, you got to do a uh, you got to give a palliative care. Do a do a tracheostomy. If the patient can't swallow, then you put a put a rails tube and then uh, uh, do a peg or things like that. Manage the patient palliatively. Okay. Then uh, how will you do thyroidectomy? What are the thyroidectomies you will do of? I can do a, sir, the different type of thyroidectomy includes a lobectomy, uh, subtotal thyroidectomy. That's all outdated. Total... Outdated, we don't do now. You do a lobectomy, you do a hemithyroidectomy. What is hemithyroidectomy? Hemithyroidectomy, uh, removal of a, uh, one lobe along with the isthmus, sir. Total hysterectomy. Okay. The lobe of a thyroid with a total hysterectomy is called hemithyroidectomy. So, when will you do an hemithyroidectomy in this patient? I will do a low, uh, I can do a hemithyroidectomy for a micropath carcinoma with less than one centimeter in size. Not everybody, will, uh, not everybody will accept. I can do it for a minimally invasive follicular carcinoma, sir. Small tumors, less than one centimeter, but not much people will agree. Now everybody tells do a total thyroid. If you if you know a patient who has got an adenoma, what do you do? Uh, this nodule comes as adenoma. What do you do? Follicular adenoma. I uh, follicular I follicular adenoma. What do you do? I can follow up the patient, sir. No, no, no. What surgery you do? I will do a hemithyroidectomy, sir. With definite, what are all the features of follicular carcinoma? Uh, follicular carcinoma will be well encapsulated, sir. Well, well encapsulated. Carcinoma. Uh, with this, sir, uh, 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 invasion, capsular invasion. Lymphovascular invasion. Can you see a capsular invasion or, or vascular invasion with an FNAC? No, sir, I can't see. So that is the FUL. I, I will do a, uh, uh, so a diagnostic hemithyroidectomy. I will do a frozen section and based upon the results of the frozen section, whether it comes as an adenoma, I will uh, close the tool. And if it's a, a carcinoma, I will do a completion thyroidectomy. Is it practicable? Can a can a frozen section can surely say that it's not a uh, malignancy? Very very unlikely. It's very fancied uh, 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 surgical option, particularly with a very young patients who uh, female patients who uh, when you do a, a total thyroidectomy and if you are inadvertently induce the um, uh, 
parathyroids lifelong they should be on uh, on calcium and the female patient without uh, the parathormone you can have trouble so because of that uh, we can do this but the uh, easiest option is if you suspect uh, malignancy when you are doing the surgery if you see it looks like malignant then do a total thyroidectomy send the patient for for total total thyroidectomy is always a safer option or if you are very sure that it's not going to ma- going to matter so you do a, a frozen section see but frozen section tumors also should undergo the uh, uh, biopsy proper biopsy and the proper biopsy if it is a uh, you close the tumor proper proper biopsy tells there is a the areas of uh, follicular carcinoma then what will you do i will do it well uh, completion thyroidectomy. Do a completion thyroidectomy. So, what's the problems in the completion thyroidectomy? Uh, the after uh, since it is a revision surgery, all the planes will be difficult to identify sir, during surgery. So, when you are doing a uh, hemithyroidectomy, you keep to one side alone. Don't open the opposite side so that the chances for addition and other things will be less on the opposite side. You can you can reasonably leave open it. And you got to uh, if you are allowed to give an option, what other extra precaution you will take when you do a uh, completion thyroidectomy? Uh, it's there in our theater. You use that for cochlear implant. A recurrent laser, uh, never monitor. Never monitor. Okay, never monitor is a. Uh, these are all the cases you should you should use a never monitor. So how do you do a with thyroidectomy? What incision you will make? I will do a poche skin cream incision, sir. It is a transverse incision made at the midline between cricoid and sternal notch, sir. And I will elevate a subplatysmal flap superior yeah. up to the level of. How will you? How will you clean the clean the skin? How will you drape the patient? Uh, I will supine position with the neck extended, with the head and elevated, head end of the table elevated, sir. Uh, with the uh, only. Uh, exposed exposure is made from the uh, uh, subvernibular region up to the chest. What do you use to clean, man? Painting with this, sir. Vitamin, sir. Covidon, I don't. I will paint with. That you should not do when you do a thyroid. Covidon iodide. Should not be washed. Should not be used for the skin because you see the patient has a so the malignant disease. You are going to do a thyroid uptake that will uh, interfere with your uptake. So cleaning should not be done with the beta din. Okay. Similarly, once you just finish the case, you want to wash. You should not wash it with a beta din solution. Okay. Yes. So, uh, how do you make an incision for a female patient? I would like to make an incision along the screen crease so that uh, it is uh, not cosmetically visible, sir. The patient who got a skin incision over the sternum will produce keloids. So when you make the patient lie down and mark the incision, when the patient gets up, the weight of the breast will pull the scar down. Pull the scar down. So, if you are ideally, you got to make the patient sit down in the ward and mark the incision side, not when the patient lies down, so that your incision side will be little above. Okay, but when the patient gets up, it will not. The breast will not pull the incision side over the the sternum to make the uh, uh, keloid. Okay. okay. Then uh, you make the take the skin crease and make an incision. So, okay. How will you prevent uh, skin bleed? By using a 
monopolar what i will be elevating the will infiltrate or not yes sir i will infiltrate with the tumescent solution not for for neck dissection for the skin incision two percent they can be done in some five ten minutes before making the incision, infiltrate with the two percent silicon with the uh, one in one lakh adrenaline. If you infiltrate, it will reduce the skin bleach. Okay. So how? Uh, where will you identify the plane exactly when you make an incision? Which is an ideal place, midline or laterally? Lateral, sir. If you if you want to elevate a subplatysmal plane, platysma is more pronounced in the lateral side of the neck. So you start from the lateral side, look for the platysma, cut the platysma, then you can take out. Okay. So where will be your uh, anterior jugular vein? Anterior jugular vein will be uh, it will be on the superficial layer of the defaces. On your subplatysmal plane, if you elevate, the vein will be along with the flap or on the on the specimen, uh, on the on the neck, on the neck, sir. It should be on the neck, and you should not puncture the anterior jugular vein. If you keep puncturing the anterior jugular vein, you will be keep on puncturing. Okay. okay, so the proper subplatysmal plane should be above the anterior jaw. Okay, then. Uh, so, once you elevate, up to what level you will elevate? Superiorly, uh, inferiorly I will elevate up to the level of sternal nodes. Superior, I will elevate up to the level of hyoids. I okay, then. Then I will, uh, I will uh, uh, incise the investing layer of the fascia uh, by making a midline incision extending from the thyroid up to the uh, sternal nodes. I will retract. Then I will, uh, I will be examining the. Uh, 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 muscles and I will be looking for any infiltration into the muscles. If they, there is infiltration is present, I should excise that part of the muscle. If it's not present, I could actually retract the muscles to expose the thyroid gland. After I expose all the muscles you will you will retain or you you retract few muscles only. I will retain all the muscles. This is short, stumpy muscle. Broad, thick muscle will be there. Sterno I I. That's very difficult to uh, to retract. If you if you need to cut, you you, you can cut the sterno thyroid. But sterno I I usually we don't we don't cut unless it's infiltrated. You want a huge, huge goiter. You are not sure of your exposure. Then you can can cut the straps as low as possible. Just cut the straps, and then what do you do? Then after exposing the thyroid, I will look for the superior thyroid pedicles. The superior thyroid, while uh, after uh, delineating the superior thyroid pedicle, I will ligate and cut. It uh, the pedicle near the thyroid. The What's the branch of the superior thyroid artery? The superior thyroid artery has got a anterior branch and posterior branch, sir. Anterior branch goes along the anterior border of the thyroid and forms anastomosis with the anterior branch of the opposite side of the superior thyroid artery. And there is uh, at the isthmus, sir. Which part of the isthmus? Superior, superior border of the isthmus. System. And there is a posterior branch which then uh, anastomosis with the ascending branch of the uh, inferior thyroid artery. Sir. What is superior thyroid artery is called? What is the main blood, su uh, blood supply for thyroid gland? Superior thyroid artery. Superior thyroid artery is the main blood supply for the, the thyroid gland. What is what is the, the function of inferior thyroid artery? Inferior thyroid artery gives blood supply to the parathyroid cell. It's an artery of the parathyroid. Mainly it supplies the, the parathyroid. It also supplies the 
skyrocket right. okay right so when will you you ligate and what precaution you will take before ligating uh, superior thyroid pedicle the superior thyroid pedicle i will ligate close to the capsule in order to prevent injury to the external branch of the uh, uh, super external branch of the superior laryngeal nerve uh, and by delineating the jaw triangle i'll be able to prevent that sir ligating close is not advisable you got to identify the superior laryngeal nerve then you got to separate the artery and ligate the artery alone because if you do if you like it very close to the uh, superior pole it's possible that you can leave behind certain tissues as you said when you are doing a cancer surgeries you are not uh, advisable to leave the thyroid tissue okay so it's not advisable to do away the uh, old teaching is that you you close as close as possible but actually you got to go above see that bifurcation and uh, 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 look for where the uh, uh, external branch of uh, superior laryngeal nerve, and then leave the nerve, ligate the vessel. Okay, that's a big vessel. Uh, I prefer doing double ligation. Okay, uh, then uh, uh, then what do you do after uh, ligating the superior pedicle? I will. Identify the middle thyroid vein and then I will dial ligate it. Sir. They they used to tell middle thyroid vein should be searched first. Okay, first is middle thyroid vein, but um, it's a very uh, 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 inconsistent vein and is not very big vein and it's not uh, usually people don't. uh give too much important uh, nowadays for the middle thyroid vein. Where will be the middle thyroid vein? yeah it will be uh, coming at the mid pro mid portion of the lateral part of the thyroid it will not be mid portion it will be in the lower third middle thyroid vein will not be in the in the middle okay, okay. then what is the other important structure you will you will uh, you will identify when you do a uh, after a ligating middle thyroid vein then i will go for ligating the inferior thyroid pedicle sir and while doing it i will uh, like to uh, prevent injury for the recurrent laryngeal nerve which lies in cross proximity with it and okay. the inferior thyroid artery the entire main branch shouldn't be uh, ligated the individual glandular branches that supplying the parathyroid gland should be spur uh, should be identified and spurred and other one should be you identify parathyroid uh the superior parathyroid usually has a uh, per, usually has a constant location sir it will be located at a point uh, in a place of 2 cm diameter at of a point 1 cm above the uh, uh, at the site where the recurrent laryngeal nerve crosses the inferior thyroid artery inferior vein of the inferior branch of the inferior border of the superior thyroid Uh, inferior border of the superior parathyroid where the recurrent laryngeal nerve identified entering into the larynx. Uh, okay, so there we have the parathyroid muscle. Parathyroid. Okay. Uh, what is roving sign? How will you identify uh, superior thyroid from the uh, fat lobule? the fat lobule which has got an individual blood supply usually is the uh, parathyroid it have an individual blood supply you see the parathyroid in a fat you just press the fat it will float like a boat that's called roving sign okay. and if you manipulate too much it will become bluish in color or it will become pinkish in color that's why it's called a lady with blushes okay then uh, you come for the uh, inferior parathyroid inferior parathyroid is very inconsistent inconsistent it can present anywhere from the root of the neck to the uh, posterior border of the uh, thyroid gland okay you see lot of uh, you see an arcade of blood supply from the inferior parathyroid 
okay and a few blood up blood uh, flu blood vessels will go to the uh, thyroid gland also so you got to leave behind all the parathyroid blood supply and ligate the uh, uh, um, uh, ligate the branches it supplies the gland okay what will you see on the interior pole Do you see any, any blood vessels in the pole? Yes, sir. In, there can be a, a coaches veins. Inferior, inferior thyroid veins will be going through the inferior pole. Uh, yes, sir. It will not be not veins. It's only your two, three veins will go. Okay. Very rarely in midline over the trachea, you can get an artery. That is called? Thyroidema artery. Thyroidema artery. So you ligate all these structures and then uh elevate the uh, uh you can elevate from lower pole to upper pole or upper pole to to lower pole preserving the recurrent lunge now uh releasing the the berries ligament okay it will be tightly adherent at the berries segment these are all the areas where on the sides you have a zucker can zucker candle nodule so that is you can uh, you you can inadvertently uh, left behind that will be be seen when you do a thyroid scan so that you got to take all the thyroid tissues from the zucker candle nodule similarly from the pyramidal lobe pyramidal lobe can extend above that also you can you can look and take out all the thyroid tissue so you do a complete thyroidectomy okay then you look for bed okay bed uh, if there is a bleeding over the uh, recurrent lunge now what do you do very close to recurrent lunge now there is one uh, small artery which is bleeding what do you do i will put a gentle pressure sir gentle pressure you see okay uh, actually, it is not advised to cauterize that bleeding as it is very proximal to the nerve. Uh, better to. You see the vessel which is bleeding and it can be taken out separately. You have a beautiful bipolar. You, you can cauterize. But the best thing is keep some uh, uh, pack over there. Turn around, look for your uh, post-surgery snacks, order the order the, the post-surgery snacks, what do you want? Uh, uh, at least how much sugar you want in your tea. Or in other words, spend some time, wait for about five minutes and take out the pack. Generally, it will stop. Generally, it will stop. If it's not stopping, you separate that vessel from the recurrent uh, lunge now, take it out and then try to ligate it. Usually we don't cauterize, we'll be we'll ligate it, taking care that the uh, nerve doesn't come inside that ligature. Or if you could, if you are very confident that you can cauterize it, you still you can cauterize it. Or if you are not very sure it's a diffuse wound, you can keep gel foam. Or you can keep a small, small piece of surgical. But these are all not very advisable because these are all bound to produce fibrosis. And these fibrosis can involve the uh, record that now can produce paresis. Okay. So uh, even if that old nerve is not getting getting perished, when you do a stroboscopy, you can see that individual muscle fibers don't work. You can see a, a lateral chicoidnoid or a, a, the posterior chicoidnoid, which is not working, can, can produce trouble. Okay, then uh, uh, so then you got to wash the area completely. Uh, you take in care that you should not wash with uh, beta COVID on adenosine. I shouldn't oh, wash. I mean, uh, with iodine solutions. Okay, you wash it with water and uh, with an antibiotic and a uh, uh, metrogel. Okay, you can use a little bit of the gentamicin or you can use a metrogel wash. And then once you wash, once you wash, you got to look for two things. One is look for air bubble. Air bubble. Second one is look for uh, bleeding. 
when you fill that uh, bed with uh, clear fluid and look if there's a bleeding you can see the bleeding point flushing nicely so you try to arrest all the bleedings and then uh, you got to keep the uh, when you inadvertently remove the parathyroid what will you do i can actually uh, place it on the bra brachioradius muscle sir how oh. Stuff it inside. Find a blood supply and keep it over there. By inserting into the bulk of the muscle. Actually, you can take that parathyroid tissue and chop it. Keep it over the, the hot surface. Keep, 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 chop, chop, chop. And make it into small, small, small bits and keep it inside a muscle. The muscle can be on the forehead or you can, can put it under the, uh, inside the sternocleidal mastoid muscle. Okay. So usually we don't put it over the uh, standard grade of the mastoid muscles because it can be a tumor nodule if you are keeping inside it's trouble. So in a case of a CA thyroid, we can keep it on the forearm. Otherwise, we are doing for a for a benign case, you can constantly keep in the this mastoid. Then you suture it. Okay, what are all the complications? The complications can be early, intermediate, and delayed complications, sir. Early complications, the most common is uh, hemorrhage, uh, tracheal injury, or esophageal injury. Intermediate complication include seroma, uh, wound infection. You are an ENT surgeon, man. Uh, recurrent nonsense injury, sir. Sorry. Unilateral or bilateral recurrent nonsense, now uh, injury. Yeah. Okay, then... Uh, uh, late complications like uh, hypothyroidism, uh, seroma. Sir? Okay, seroma then. Seroma, wound infection, flap necrosis, uh, wound dehiscence, uh, late complications like. Uh, very, very, very. This are all very, very, very rare, not very common. Uh, hypocalcemia, tetany, uh, hypothyroidism leading to myxedema. Okay, will you keep a drain? Yes, sir, I will keep a drain, sir. You will keep a drain. Okay, when will you start orals? The first post of day itself, sir. First day, first day drain is 40 ml, 50 ml. Second day drain is 1.5 liters. What do you think? What do you suspect? There is a active uh, bleeding in the cavity, sir. In the wound. Uh, salivary fistula. Fistula, sir. What fistula? Thyroid fistula is common? No, no. You always do always do large thyroid cases with the to, with the rails tube, right? It's a chylus fistula, sir. Chylus fistula. Okay. So how will you identify chylus fistula? It will be uh, the lipo uh, if you were lipid profile, it will be elevated, sir. It will be appearing uh, like a thick uh, uh, White colored fluid with a white colored fluid. Okay, what do you do? I will uh, advise a uh, 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 fat free diet. You start with niloral, rails tube incision. And then you classify this as a high volume fistula or low volume fistula. If it's a low volume fistula, you give a Local pressure, compression bandages, and uh, try whether the fistula just seals by itself. Give a fat free diet. Okay, the main drawback is patient will be losing a lot of fat and patient will become emaciated immediately. Otherwise, you re explore, identify the uh, leaking chylus fistula, and then ligate it. Usually on the inferior pole, uh, you got to look for. Uh, left hand side, you 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 look for uh, uh, thoracic duct. Mm -hmm. Right hand side, you you look for amyotrophic vein. Okay, then then there can be hypocalcemia, tetany, hypothyroidism, um, Uh, scar, uh, keloid formation. I don't want scar. What do you do? 
endoscopic thyroidectomy sir how do you do endoscopic thyroidectomy what are all the approaches not red what is submental approach what is retroauricular approach what is axillary approach for an ent surgeon what do you should know about endoscope in the endoscopic thyroidectomy the endoscope used is what scope for endoscopy yes surgery what scope you use zero degrees i will use a zero degree scope sir huh? hopkins rigid rod zero degree scope sir you don't use your 4 mm scope what they use is the laparoscope so you are not seen in endoscope thyroidectomy no no sir I am. we request our uh, uh, uh surgical endocrinal endocrine surgeons to take a class or arrange for a endoscopic thyroidectomy demo okay so i think it's it's almost uh, long time since we have started the game but uh, generally you don't discuss all these things in your uh, clinical examination because your uh, because your uh, clinical examination will be very short because it's not a not your long case it is your short case so usually uh, it will be there for about 15 20 minutes only okay. okay anyway most most of the possible questions for an ent surgeon has been asked but this is not sufficient for a thyroid discussion but uh, that's all they will ask you okay, okay. any other uh, things to be covered Siva? Siva, is it okay? Shall we call it a day? Hello, Hello sir. Yeah, tell me, Siva. Sir, thank you. Uh, yeah, yes, sir, we can stop. Sir. Actually, sir. Thank sir, you very much. Really Thanks, really Deepak. Deepak. for your uh, in spite of your language barriers you are uh, uh, we are very happy to see you doing well and uh, thanks uh, thank everyone particularly janagram and uh, satya for making this possible in spite of our uh, reluctance uh, we thank everyone for attending this and uh, of course our uh, our big boss siva Uh, but for siva this uh, classes will not be keep on uh, progressing thank you very much thank you sir sir no sir sir surgery mudikkala sir ipo na mudinjirukka no problem i'll i'll talk with them i'll talk with them okay sir thank you thank you sir okay sir right and the yeah tell me endoscopic thyroidectomy naanga varum sir class yeah sure sir i'll i'll let you know actually we had uh, a demonstration from a person from vietnam he came and did all these things uh, so 